Hi, I'm Neil Hunt. I'm the Digital Content Lead at Broadband World Forum, and I'm with Craig Fenson, Director of Strategy and Operations at Google. Craig, thank you very much for joining us. Today. My pleasure, Neil. So, can you tell me a little bit about what you do at Google? Yeah, sure. So, uh, my, my title's rather descriptive. I look after strategy and operations, uh, and what that means uh, is I think about the, uh, the way the industry is developing uh, and our business within that. I write our business plan in conjunction with the leadership team here. Uh, identify the, the growth uh, that, that, that we want to get out of it and where we want to focus, how we measure success, all that sort of thing, and, and then uh, hopefully operate the business uh, to those uh, objectives. In terms of how we work with broadband, you know, we're an internet company, so broadband and those who, who provide it, uh, you know, is, is really the artery system. Uh, of our uh, of the internet, uh, so it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's an inexorable part of our uh, our business. And then I suppose specifically, you know, what technologies are you exploring? Yeah, so we, we work with tel uh, you know tele telecommunications operators and network operators, mobile, fixed, and, and otherwise cable, etc., across a number of dimensions. Clearly a core part of our business is advertising and all of those parties advertise to their target audiences, both B2B and, and, and B2C, so that's a dimension. Uh, but we also work in uh, a number of other areas, so access uh, is a great example. About 50% of the world's population today has internet access. So job number one is getting the other eyeballs online and that's a, a collective effort. Uh, we, we're uh, working with uh, GSMA and, and the uh, network operators on rolling out a rich cons uh, communications service, a messaging service that can operate across uh, the Android ecosystem, which is, a, which is a Google property. We are working with network operators, helping them stand up uh, SDN and NFE using some of the cloud and machine learning technology that we've got, which is all open source. So TensorFlow is our machine learning library. We have a thing called t a Tensor Processing Unit, which can uh, cope with 11 petabytes plus of, uh, of processing power to help power uh, and accelerate machine learning. Uh, we work with um, network operators on uh, core access. So an example there is uh, Puerto Rico. So we have this venture called Google Loon. Uh, these are high altitude balloons. They sit in the stratosphere 80,000 feet above the Earth's surface. They use machine learning to keep themselves geostationary, more or less, in order to extend mobile network coverage in um, black spots. And we have uh, a few of those balloons, or positioned a few of those balloons, over Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria, I think it was, working in conjunction with AT&T and T-Mobile. So many dimensions. So you mentioned kind of open source there, you know, and that kind of need for collaboration you see, I mean, you mentioned the kind of collaboration, in, you know, in a kind of business sense, but how important is that, you know, is it a kind of burgeoning technology scene that we're, that we're in there? Well, I think collaboration in the digital age is absolutely essential. It's just a fact. Our business, for example, would not exist, but for users like you and me who use our products, whether it's a search product or a YouTube product or an Android phone uh, or something else. We, we, uh, we work with app developers who develop great apps that run on the Android uh, system. We work with advertisers and partners uh, who uh, use those channels to reach uh, consumers that they wish to reach. So that's the reality of our business, and I think it's increasingly true of others whose businesses are built around technology, like network operators. So you're um, a keynote speaker at Broadband World Forum uh, this year, and you're talking about, um, you know, th there's a big push across Europe and indeed the world about kind of this, achieving this kind of gigabit speed. Um, and you're talking about gigabit drivers. Can you tell us a little bit about what they are? Absolutely. Well, it's interesting to look back before looking forward, actually, and if you think about how far we've come. You know, only 50 years ago, more or less, we landed on the moon, you know, using technology that was less sophisticated than the phones that we carry in our pockets today. You know, the modern computing age, personal computers, is really only a 30-year story. The internet is 20 years old. And in 2007, when Apple launched their iPhone, that was the, the dawn of the smartphone era. And that was just 10 years ago. 
Uh, so haven't we come a long way? It's, it's become such a ubiquitous part of our lives. You know, we reach for our phone, don't we, or our other surface when we want to know something, go somewhere, learn something, do something. Uh, so we've cultivated a, uh, an age where the consumer is uh, curious. You know, we search things before we, uh, before we do them and compare things, etc. They're demanding, you know, uh, they, they want it now and, uh, you know, as soon as possible. Uh, and, and they're impatient, you know, it's, uh, it's the sense of immediacy and that's not only a technology thing but it's also, uh, you know, a, a service thing in terms of delivery times and, uh, and this sort of thing. So that whole era and particularly the smartphone, I would say, has driven a new consumer and that's driven demand and, and bandwidth with demand. The biggest use of bandwidth right now is video. So Cisco uh, says that uh, video will represent 82% of internet traffic by 2021. It's probably not far off that in many countries today. So people are consuming short form video, image search, this sort of thing. That takes up bandwidth. Uh, connected things, IoT, uh, is another thing that's driving it. Somewhat related data. Data has exploded. More data will be created this year than in 5,000 years of human history, all enabled by digital. And then the processing necessary to cope with that data, interpret it in useful ways, is also driving, uh, is also driving bandwidth. So there are a number of dimensions that drive the gigabit uh, economy, and I'm very proud to say that uh, here in the UK, I think we're one of the we're one of the leaders from that uh, broadband, fast broadband perspective. It's interesting putting it in that kind of um, historical perspective that you kind of um, look at where where we were and uh, where we're moving to, and then I guess that that kind of what new products and services are enabled by that. How much of that is led by tech companies such as yourselves? You know, maybe te the telco operators that are our audience. Um, looking for new ways of creating revenue versus the kind of pull of uh, consumers looking yeah. for more and being demanding, as you said? Well, I think it's both. Uh, and they're kind of uh, linked. Uh, they're, they're, they're sort of yin and yang. So I don't think, you know, 20 years ago, any consumer woke up and thought, I'd really love to consume one minute videos of cats doing funny things. That's a genre and a use case that's evolved and been enabled. Uh, by uh, 3G from a mobile point of view and ADSL uh, and fibre-based broadband in a fixed line sense. You know, the bandwidth uh, uh, available through those things have given rise to a number uh, uh, of, of use cases and interests and passions that have developed and, you know, and, and then the consumer leads us in, in, in many dire directions. The users tell us what they they like to, uh, to use and that in turn drives demand on bandwidth and so it continues. And I think as I look forward, you know, with the, uh, with the development of software defined networks and network function virtualization, 5G just around the corner, this will again give rise to a number of new and interesting uh, uses that users will guide us on that we probably can't even predict now. I mean, you mentioned you mentioned five G there, and and you know, looking forward, how do you see the next five years? You know, obviously we're talking about you know, uh, gigabit twenty twenty in Europe a lot, you know, um, and you know the five G trials are finishing and the consumer roll rollouts are starting at the end of this year. Well, how do you see the, the 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 scene changing in the next five years, and what will be the challenges to get to that kind of five G or or you know gigabit and and beyond? Well, at a, at a rudimentary level, five uh, G will just make a user experience much better. So users will be able to easily stream 4K and even 8K uh, video, just as an example, 360 degree video, and that'll be uh, interesting. Um, you know, cases around uh, you know connected, augmented, and virtual reality. If we think forward to a self-driving car uh, era, you know, these cars will need to talk to each other. You know, that's an example of. IoT connected things on a massive scale that will be enabled and fueled by the possibilities of uh, 5G and uh, SDN NFE, and you can really do very interesting things with with that technology. As you know, the audience at, uh, at this forum will know better than better than me. Like throttling bandwidth to an individual premises, just as an example. You know, maybe they've got a, an event that they need to. 
um, to, to ramp up the bandwidth for. So this, this sort of thing becomes possible in a software-defined uh, network environment. And I guess, you know, touching on the challenges, you know, what do we need to, to do? Or, or, you know, certainly what do the telcos, uh, network operators need to do to get there, I suppose? Well, first of all, I think every, everyone's deeply aware that this is not a simple journey and it's definitely not a cheap journey. Uh, so I have a high sensitivity and empathy for the investment that uh, we'll all need to make to enable uh, some of these new, uh, new technologies. Uh, we're investing lots uh, in, in, in helping uh, network operators uh, mobilise towards the, towards the opportunity. And in some cases, the, the horizon, the payback on that will be, uh, will be long. I think that's true of most disruptive you know, technology um, inventions or introductions. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think, I think probably the, the best rule, the rule that served us well, is continue to listen and be guided by the user and the user experience. Those who really focus in on the experience as opposed to the supply side uh, will be able to really capitalise on these new use cases that are made possible. So, Craig, we're looking forward to having you at Broadband World Forum. What are you hoping to get from the event? Uh, for me, I, you know, when I attend these things, I tend to get more out of them than, uh, than perhaps I, I give, give to them. So I just love meeting people. Uh, I'd, I'd love to uh, mix with some of the uh, network operators and equipment providers that you have there, learn what's on their mind, what's challenging them, and uh, understand you know, uh, their perspective on how it all unfolds. I certainly, and Google certainly, doesn't have all of the answers. So I'll be there with two ears and one mouth. And, doing a lot of listening. Brilliant. Craig, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.